Hi, I'm Locke Kelly, and I'd like to welcome you to the Way of Effortless Mindfulness. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between effortless mindfulness and what you may know of as basic mindfulness or what I call deliberate mindfulness. So effortless mindfulness is an advanced yet simple practice that is tremendously beneficial. I've taught both deliberate mindfulness and effortless mindfulness for many years and consider them both to be extremely helpful. But let me show you a little bit about the difference between the two. So in deliberate mindfulness, there are usually three practices that are used. The first one is one-pointed attention or focusing or shamatha meditation, peaceful abiding. The second is observing the contents of consciousness, insight meditation or vipassana. And the third is often a practice of generating loving kindness. Now, let me contrast the first one with deliberate mindfulness style and then effortless mindfulness style and then come to the other two. So in deliberate mindfulness, we notice that we are living a distracted life, that our mind is moving and that we are often mindless. So in order to be mindful, we create a sense of one-pointed attention from an attentive point of view to our breath at our nostril, at our chest, or at our belly. So what we're doing is we're gathering our attention and focusing it on one place within our body. And in doing so, we create a sense of calm and focus. However, that calm and focus on an object keeps us in a kind of a narrow point of view. In effortless mindfulness, what we're going to do is we're going to open out of what might be the cloud of our mind, chattering mind, into the spacious awareness and discover that there's an awareness or an optimal mind, an open mind, that's already aware, which we can then be aware from. And from this spacious and then pervasive awareness, we discover that we're aware not only of the ability to focus on our breath, but we feel almost as if we're being breathed, as if our breath is connected to the outer world, the inner world, and we feel as if we're in this flow or what's been called in the zone. So this sense of opening first rather than closing and creating instead of a point of view an open focus that it feels interconnected and energetic is the main difference in effortless and deliberate mindfulness. Similarly, in the second practice of deliberate mindfulness where we create a mindful witness that can be aware of contents of consciousness like thoughts, feelings, and sensations, we become able to detach or disidentify with thinking. So we have this great insight that I'm not the thinker, I'm not my thoughts, I'm the mindful witness. In effortless mindfulness, we can observe the contents of consciousness similarly, but then our interest begins in effortless mindfulness to be interested in the context. Can awareness be aware and feel back into that awareness, which is behind the point of view, behind the camera, that which is aware and interconnected and open-minded and open-hearted gives us this sense of being in a flow state. Now, many of you naturally go into this, as I've discovered by the reports from people, doing whatever your favorite activity is. 
when you go hiking in nature, when you go and play a sport, those who dance or play music uh, will leave this point of view and go into what's called a flow state or in the zone. And the description is that there's a more spacious, interconnected sense of well-being that we're able to effortlessly focus without going to create a manager or an ego center and we feel optimally functioning. So the effortless mindfulness great advantage is that we're doing it while our eyes are open and while we feel like we can include activity right away without creating a detached witness that has to be mindful of doing things in a kind of mechanical way. We feel like we can, in just the same amount of time, shift into this amazing, natural, optimal mind. So the good news about that is that this dimension of our consciousness, this open heart, open mind, is already installed. And we just have to learn how to intentionally shift into it. The third practice, the generating of love and kindness, is amazing that when we open to this spacious awareness and discover that there's an awake awareness that's already aware by itself, as itself, we kind of unplug from our ego center, but then we shift into that, which is the new ground this kind of awake, boundless, timeless, and yet here, awareness, which is equally outside and within. And when that awareness then is discovered to be dynamic and intelligent, it arises as thoughts and feelings, which are then noticed to be made of awareness, so there's not two things happening. And most notably is this feeling of everywhere and here. We feel a, a sense of safety, well-being, and a natural loving kindness and compassion that arises that we don't have to generate with our minds, but is discovered to be our natural condition when we simply leave behind the old point of view and upgrade into this nature of mind, this open mind, open heart. And then from here, just like in a flow state, we can be this optimal, interconnected, loving being that we are when we are at our best. Those moments that we've so enjoyed in our life can become the new normal.